All right. Hello. Hello, everyone. That's so exciting. Happy Human Rights Buenos Day. Buenos días. Feliz Día de los Derechos Humanos para todos. Gracias por estar con nosotros. Welcome to the launch webinar uh, for the social media campaigns produced by our Global Action Community Engagement Grants, virtual advocacy in support of women and the LGBTI community. Uh, the third of the global actions under our global workshop in 2021, which we called Global Summit Building Global Capacity for Inclusive Democracies at the International Coalition of Sites of Conscience. So this is our last grant group uh, presenting their projects and we're very excited today. So my name, for those of you who don't know me, is JJ Leme Joseph. I am the Senior Program Manager for Africa, Latin America and the Caribbean at the Coalition. So before uh, we get started, let me just get my, oh yeah, my arm, my eyes are really burning, I'm so sorry. Before we get started, I'd just like to remind everybody that uh, the webinar is being translated into Arabic, English, French and Spanish. And you can choose your language at the bottom of, oh my God, I'm so sorry, but my eye is really burning. <laughs> sorry, I can't even keep it open. At the bottom of your screen, you will find your interpretation button. Please choose the language that suits you best. Um, also, um, it's always better or more productive uh, and engaging if we turn our change, rename ourselves on Zoom to include your name and your organization. So if you please take two minutes to do that. Also, please remember to keep yourself muted when not speaking. If you're not sharing your screen, if we are not sharing our screen, we encourage you to use speaker view so you can engage with the speakers more effectively and they will appear more fully on your screen. And also if your connection is bad, please remember to turn off your videos. It's, it helps a lot in general. If you're having technical problems during the meeting, please reach out to Camila Yanzagono Bravo, labeled as tech host, through a private chat. She's our tech help during today's session. And please feel free at any time to use the chat box to make comments and remarks and ask questions throughout. We'll keep an eye on the chat box and we'll put your questions forward if you need. Um, and uh, we're also always active on social media during the webinars. So uh, we mention uh, and quotes uh, of what is being said and what's being presented to amplify the voices of those speaking and participating. So if you choose to do the same, please just make sure you tag us and use the handles on this slide that we'll be using to amplify the what's uh, what's being posted about this meeting and if you do not wish to be named or shown on social media platforms please also let the tech host know through a private chat we understand that some of you may have uh, safety and security issues so please let us know okay uh so just to frame today's training session all these networking capacity building opportunities they take place under the umbrella of the international coalition of sites of conscience which is the only network working to activate the power of historic sites and museums and memory initiatives as agents of social change around the world. It was founded in 1999 by nine members in seven countries, and now it's constituted by over 300 members in more than 65 countries. From Ellis Island in New York City, to former centers of detainment in Argentina, to sites that remember and learn from the transatlantic slave trade in West Africa. So as a network, we support our members in becoming sites of conscience, the financial and technical support, networking, joint programs and training workshops, uh, and programs like the one we are showcasing today. So this year, most of our programmatic work as Sites of Conscience has been centered on tackling discrimination, whether we are talking about discrimination based on race, ethnicity, religious or faith-based belief, gender or sexual orientation. To that end, we have organized three global workshops aimed to provide a space for a critical analysis of the root causes of today's discrimination and hate violence, and offer technical and financial support to pilot community projects to turn the knowledge and skills gained 
through the workshop sessions into action and generate projects such as the one the ones you, we are launching today. In terms of the topic we're dealing today, from industrialized cities to rural indig indigenous settlements, women, girls, lesbian and bisexual, transgender and intersex LGBTI communities uh, are subjected to a panoply of discriminatory practices and human rights abuses due to their gender, gender identity, gender expression and sexual orientation. According to Amnesty International, 76 countries criminalize sexual acts between adults of the same sex. And in 10 countries, the death penalty is the maximum sentence for sexual acts between same sex adults. When it comes to gender based uh, discrimination and violence, there are laws, customs, and beliefs in all regions of the world that deny women and girls their rights. Gender stereotypes and norms are responsible for much of the violence, exclusion, and lack of opportunity that women and girls suffer around the world. UN Women reports that globally, almost one in three women who are older than 15 years of age have been subjected to intimate partner violence, non-partner sexual violence, or both at least once in their lives. Furthermore, the global COVID pandemic has also had disproportionate impact on women, girls, and the LGBTI community, leaving them particularly vulnerable to violations, abuse, and economic inequality. This year then, as I said earlier, between September 14th and 16th, we held challenging bias against women, girls, and the LGBTI community. It was a global workshop, and it brought together sites of conscience and community members across the world to build allyship and develop joint strategies to counter systemic discrimination, ill treatment, and violence that women, girls, and the LGBTI people suffer today. Following the workshop, eight selected sites of conscience were awarded community engagement grants collectively entitled virtual advocacy in support of women girls and the lgbti community to develop a social media or digital advocacy campaign to highlight commonly held biases against these communities and groups the campaigns we now present are the result of these projects and uh, without further ado I will start showing the materials produced by our members and this uh, after we finish uh, showing all the the campaigns, then we'll open the session for a Q&A. So I would like to uh, first um, show the project of Caminos de la Memoria in Peru. Facing the increase of conservative positions on the rights of LGBTI people in Peru, Caminos de la Memoria joins the actions carried out by various collectives and human rights activists and organizations in, by implementing a campaign with three micro videos and one long video about attacks received by L the LGBTI community during the internal armed conflict and nowadays. These videos present these attacks as a continuum of violence that needs to be stopped. We will now show the long video of their campaign, which encapsulates the three short ones. El 31 de mayo de 1989, los integrantes del movimiento revolucionario Tupac Amaru. On May 31st, 1989, the members of Tupac Amaru entered Las Gardenias Bar in the 9 de abril settlement. Members killed eight people of the LGBT community. And they said, that's how facts die. They used their actions to corrupt youth, the undesirables. This was called social cleansing. These phrases and acts have chased us during our lives. We're still violated to correct our sexual orientation. We're being hit, we're being killed. Even many of our representatives justify these acts under the name of conservative groups. Our memory holds victims of Gardenias. 
but how many more people need to die under for the sake of social cleansing it's us the expendables ones but also the survivors those who dare to fight from love and to face a society that attacks us Corazón resiste que somos millones. Tú sigue queriendo, no dejes de amar. Corazón no dejes nunca de latir. Corazón no dejes nunca de luchar. Corazón resiste que somos millones. Tú sigue queriendo. As a person or as a boy, you have many questions and you're very shy at the same time. You never get to develop this with your parents. When I first realized what I was doing, that I, as a boy, a five-year-old boy, understood what I was, I could never tell my parents because they have certain customs and religions without proper development. I couldn't fight that. They did What they did was lock me up and leave me like Rapunzel in a castle at home without being able to see farther what I could accomplish. Schools, the streets, university, where we move around outside our homes, it's a wild space. LGBTIQ people are exposed to all types of violence because of how we express ourselves, how we feel, and in many occasions, when we talk with our friends, we say, at some point, hopefully we'll be able to stop fighting this and be comfortable being a LGBTIQ person around. Currently, we can't go outside uh, without fear of not being able to return home. I believe that the situation of the LGBT community has been based on this love and love uh, uh, paradigm but we still don't have uh, haven't addressed the right to life or a uh, worthy life what if we're part of your family would you kick us out would you hit us would you shout us things in the street when you have seen a person grow being lgbti that may change your perspective. We want to appeal to this sensitivity. That's why um, we talk about raising awareness. We have a lot of theory, but we have let our hearts go cold. And this time we need to warm it again. I was invited to a wedding and I was happy for because for the first time I would be wearing a dress. It was an accomplishment for me. And one kid approached me and told me, if I could pay, if I could be get paid to have sex with him. And I went to the bathroom and cried because it was the first time as a woman outside and I had been offered that. So I wept. I left the bathroom and I went and confronted him. I may, I shamed him, embarrassed him in front of others. And it was so satisfying for me to tell him that I was not a prostitute for the sake of those who can't do it and out of fear, uh, keep shut up, sh keep shut. Theater was a safe place for me, my professors, my teachers, um, and the whole theater community is much more sensitive. Being in drama and theater for me was like my trench, my safe place. For the rest of the world, it wasn't uh, okay to be myself, 
study in theater and in drama, it is. I believe it's our duty to reclaim our stories. We need to see ourselves represented in the stories and on screens and on the stages. And not less important, theater needs to be a repairing scenario. We need a, a culture of reparation. Also, those who are more privileged than us, they need to repair. We need more communication. Where's the communication on TV or in the me social media when they are needed to help? We need every home to help their children, to refrain from discriminating, to refrain from being intolerant with the LGBT community. We all have the rights to be happy. We all have the right to move forward. For those of us who are somehow privileged, it's important for us to become visible, to let everyone know that we're part of the community. Because somehow we grow just thinking about heterosexual people, but we don't think about this otherness, this other reality. I think about a little child named Stephanie, a nine-year-old, afraid because she's been told she's a sinner. But if I saw uh, an LGBT person on TV, not as an LGBT, but as a human being, I would have liked to grow with that in mind. I would, I would like to see that horizon. It's also somehow unfair to ask uh, uh, the LGBT people for certain tolerance, because even while making this video, it's uh, dangerous for me. I always hear my mother say, please don't, please don't say you are a lesbian this time. And not because she wants me to hide, but because she's afraid that I won't come back. And there's still a long way to go. I think that asking a society to respect us is, is annoying. It's annoying having to do that. Today we're out of the closet. We have locked down our tears and our silence because we are out as butterflies to face a prejudicious world who fears difference. Cicatriz, a florecer las heridas, vine a sanar la muerte de tantas. A renacer la cicatriz, a florecer las heridas, y no tengo culpa ni miedo. Such a beautiful project. Uh, I would really like to congratulate Caminos de la Memoria. It makes me want to cry every time I see the video. Okay, our next project, Raise Your Voice for Gender Equality from uh, Centro, uh, so, sorry, Center for Memory and Reparations in Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone is enacting a gender equality and women's empowerment law. However, there is very little sensitization about the bill and many young people have not heard of it. A few parliamentarians are also reluctant to support it. Center for Memory and Reparations Project aims to raise awareness and influence parliamentarians to support its enactment by making a short campaign video to, of five influential, influential women and men explaining the importance of the bill and calling on Sierra Leoneans uh, to raise their voices in support. The Gender Empowerment Bill is a very intervention which we should embrace. We cannot have um, a society where 52% of the population that are women are completely left out of the decision-making table 
or cannot take part in the decisions that caters for the political, social, and economic needs. Gender equality simply means that men and women have equal power, equal rights to financial independence, education, and personal development. I am in support of the gender bill because of two main things. The gender bill is here to promote the lives of women, is here to help to see women on top of situation and women to walk side by side with men of Sierra Leone. Remember, we are 52% of the population of Sierra Leone and we've been doing it and we hope to do it. With the gender bill, Sierra Leone will improve. With the gender bill, Sierra Leone will move a step ahead. And with the gender bill, Sierra Leone will be a state that will stand like all the states and like a state that will stand on top of situation. So help us to push help us to vote for the gender bill for the benefit of all Sierra Leoneans. Everyone knows one woman at least who has suffered injustice, discrimination in, at the office, in parliament, in business places. Just because we are women, each time it's as if we have to demand or command the expect. The expect is not being given to us even when we present the work we do, and when it comes to the work we do, the impacts we create in the environment, in the society, in our workplaces, we always have to reintroduce ourselves and demand the expect. And I think that's tiring, really, because for the men, most times women are doing better works than the men in certain areas and communities, but the men already have the respect for us, the women, we have to go through the hard work. It's like an everyday struggle. So the gender bill is important because it will help solve that problem and we'll all be seen as equals. This gender empowerment uh, bill, which we hope will become law, is going to be one of the most important and historic uh, steps that have been taken in governance in my country. And we do believe that for a country that has over 50% of the population being women, it is only normal and right and just that they should, their voice should be heard and that they should be part of the governance uh, structure of this country. So the decision to accord them with a minimum of 30% of the seats, uh, not only in parliament, but also in uh, appointive uh, positions and of, of course in the in the words as well that decision i believe is just a first step um, to the complete and full empowerment of women in Sierra Leone. You have to raise your voice for women's empowerment. Support women's empowerment. Support the passing of the gender bill into a law for the benefit of our children's children and for the benefit of the number that is high in the population of Sierra Leone. Women, power, women are the people that will help Sierra Leone to develop. Raise your voice to women's empowerment it matters to you. Raise your voice for women's empowerment. Raise your voice for women's empowerment. It matters to you. It matters to you. It matters to you. We also like to congratulate Center for Memory and Reparations, a very strong video, and I really hope it really plays a part in, in passing the bill. Uh, so next we have uh, Forum pour la mémoire vigilante from Rwanda. Uh, in different districts in Rwanda, pregnancies and risky sexual practices have risen amongst teenagers. For Hompo La Memoire Vigilance campaign aims to change the mentality of community members who discriminate against these girls and to empower the girls in their right to life with a, to a life with dignity and away from discrimination. The following video has been produced to highlight their experiences. Avoir une grossesse non désirée. Having uh, an uh, 
explain the pregnancy. The sound is not coming out. JJ? Yes, you're not, there's no sound? Yeah, there was no sound. Okay, just a minute. I was, all right, let's try again. I'm sorry about that. Avoir une grossesse non désirée à l'âge de Having an unplanned uh, uh, pregnancy uh, uh, during adolescence is a uh, uh, problem that affect single women. We are in Mohanga, one of the districts of the province of the south of Rwanda. About 20 women that gave, pregnancy, gave birth during adolescence in November 2021 uh, have received sessions of sensitization uh, regarding an unplanned uh, pregnancy. Uh, participants being Burundese uh, refugees uh, and members of a uh, uh, welcoming community represent uh, uh, testimonies, uh, Clarice, uh, Burundi's uh, refugees uh, uh, gave her uh, birth uh, while she was in exile in Rwanda. I was only 14 years old when I gave uh, birth to my child. Uh, I had no idea how to go about it as a parent because uh, myself as well, I still needed to be educated. I didn't know how to give affection to my child. I was cast out of my house and the uh, choir, the society and uh, the surrounding uh, uh, banned me. I stopped my studies and they really affected my child because uh, I gave birth uh, prematurely. Uh, fellow uh, uh, Eliane uh, smiling uh, realized that uh, it was not uh, uh, she could not uh, uh, for, um, give up on her alone and she remembered the consequences because she also gave up uh, uh, prematurely the main cause of uh, undesired pregnancy is poverty uh, the fact of being a refugee uh, sexual abuse uh, at school or on the way to school the consequences uh, are the rejection of society with uh, a number of names flagged uh, uh, on me, uh, prostitute, uh, poor education, uh, delinquency, and uh, uh, maybe sometimes it's an accident of life. Uh, what is uh, comforting is that uh, after a rain is a good uh, time, but uh, that requires uh, a lot of effort and a great determination from our side. As a blast of uh, 4th of August, uh, uh, there were a large number of to develop and uh, go forward uh, is uh, possible when you hear. Uh, and can you hear me? There is a problem with the video. School, uh, 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 after getting uh, uh, the audio does not match the video the that I'm seeing. Uh, she is having a small uh, trade uh, to gain to, to earn money. I begged my father to give me. Where is interference, uh, man? Can you hear me? Because I was saying to myself, between our became French. I've given up on my high school studies. Uh, that is not the meaning. That doesn't mean that it is the end of the world. With uh, this uh, small amount of money, I started uh, uh, a small trade uh, of uh, fruit and uh, vegetables. And every week, I could save uh, 500 francs or a uh, thousand francs. Uh, which I was saving, which allowed me to grow my trade, and I'm preparing to get a, a stand in the market. I can live and feed my child who's in a second primary school right now. I advise young girls like me not to lose hope. The dilemma uh, overcame by Adrian have uh, risen a number of times uh, to Aline as well, uh, this uh, Burundese uh, who tried to uh, commit suicide after uh, being uh, pregnant uh, at 19 uh, in a foreign land. As a single child, uh, not even having anyone with me, uh, I tried to, suicide, to commit suicide when I realized I was pregnant uh, when I was 19. 
I tried to abort the child because the one who uh, made me pregnant did not recognize that, but uh, uh, by fear of death and uh, thanks to the advice of other people, I was able to resist and advise uh, young ladies of my age not uh, to uh, have sexual relationships uh, before marriage uh, or uh, as long as they are still uh, on the desk at school, uh, they need to abstain so that they don't fall into traps. And Bella, uh, a friend, uh, a refugee uh, who has a third child, uh, of which uh, two uh, uh, twins, uh, also say that the children in this condition need to uh, enjoy life. The child has nothing uh, wrong with this uh, issue. It must be uh, taken into account and loved. When you had him uh, prematurely, you need to take good care of him and avoid him to be frustrated because he didn't choose to be born in these conditions. In uh, this uh, hard life uh, uh, forced women uh, who got uh, undesired pregnancies uh, to be given uh, all the way to the worst, but uh, uh, due to uh, relevant advices, uh, they could make it. The source of my inspiration and my comfort uh, is uh, this child. Every time I wake up and I look at him, I say to myself that he needs to live properly. He must be happier than me. He must study, uh, uh, go as far as I couldn't reach in studies. I ask parents, society, community, and administration not to undermine us and our dear children. I am among the girls who hated themselves because of the undesired pregnancy. I even tried to abort the child. Even as that wasn't enough, I threw my child when he was born and I became a prostitute. But then after, I said to myself that my life would be ended if I remain in such a situation. And therefore now I'm an ambassador to advise others not to give up on hope. Even here, there is one who had a bad plan for her third uh, pregnancy, and thanks God who advised her and convinced her to let the child leave. In fact, uh, thanks to this kind of uh, meeting and advice, Janet decided to change her opinion while she tried to get rid of the third pregnancy. I had my first pregnancy uh, by uh, accident. The second time, it was poverty. Somebody promised me uh, wonders, and then uh, here I am pregnant again for the third time. I had planned to abort uh, or even to abandon my child at birth, but uh, by hearing testimonies of other people, I am comforted and I am going to get pregnant and to give birth and uh, raise my child and he will get uh, even more love than his elders. Thanks God uh, to this, uh, uh, thanks to this uh, workshop, my child is saved. The new uh, sound uh, to uh, bring enjoyment uh, in the workshop. Anyway, and yes, a parent uh, about six years old is advising parent uh, not to advise, not to mistreat uh, a parent who has girls who have fallen pregnant. I'm really shocked to hear that uh, there are parents uh, who still mistreat their children who get birth uh, during adolescence, uh, leading them uh, to mess up their lives in uh, prostitution uh, because uh, the parents should be the first people to support their daughters. They also need a session of uh, entrepreneurship uh, to be able to take themselves, uh, uh, to take care of themselves and uh, put in place small project. Uh, Madame Stefani is leading this kind of groups uh, to start uh, activities uh, to generate uh, revenues or with a small capital. The girls' mothers uh, are people like uh, other people with a small capital. They can rise up and take off. Uh, and uh, thanks to uh, uh, activities generating fund, uh, they can uh, go forward and they just need a good vision. The forum for uh, vision and memory that uh, is leading project uh, to fight against uh, uh, undesired pregnancies uh, in communities uh, for those who are victi have been victims uh, in collaboration with uh, the International Coalition of Self-Consciousness. Uh, uh, they 
Uh, happy to know that uh, there are lives that are saved uh, through the sessions. Ferdinand uh, Lagege, a representative. Here it is about saving the life of this uh, girl, mothers and the children. It is in fact a family of two or more than more many people. Uh, uh, so it is a calvary which is a field of trauma, uh, which is shared with the, between the mother and the child. And the child is uh, undergoing uh, very bad consequences. So that is the reason why, uh, as uh, uh, we, within our uh, organization and our partner, the Coalition of Self Consciousness, and we want to create a hope uh, in this uh, kind of uh, girl to avoid uh, these children also coming from an undesired pregnancy, uh, may not develop a bad behavior because of a uh, lack of hope of the mothers, uh, even though they are uh, adolescents. So we encourage them to fight for the future and uh, that of their children uh, instead of uh, to continue to be dominated by uh, uh, the feeling of uh, uh, lack of uh, uh, these are two international NGOs who also want to mobilize the member of the community and the parent of uh, girl mothers to change the uh, mentality and to stop uh, to discriminate these uh, single mothers uh, and uh, as uh, to manifest uh, that uh, the uh, uh, moral is uh, lifted up. Uh, these uh, uh, single mothers, uh, they are engaging uh, in the fight of undesired pregnancy uh, since adolescence, uh, but uh, they are also lifting up uh, the moral of those who have fallen in these situations. So, thank you for Humbola Mema Vigilant. It is uh, so heartening to see what comes out of young women supporting each other and sharing their experiences. It's a very strong project you're sharing with us. So next, uh, uh, we have Museo Internacional de para la Democracia in Argentina, in Rosario. Um, Museo Internacional para la Democracia supports and accompanies the work of Archivo Travesti Trans de Santa Fe, which is the Santa Fe's Transvestite Trans Memory Archive team, who are co-drivers of this awareness campaign. The campaign seeks to achieve understanding appreciation, respect, and support from citizens and federal, provincial, and municipal authorities for the struggle for the full rights of transvestite and transgender community in Argentina and the world. The campaign is composed of three short videos containing interviews and testimonials of survivors. Bueno, en el Día de la Memoria Travesti Trans... En el Día de la Memoria Trans... En el Día de la Memoria Travesti Trans, reivindico el derecho de nuestras compañeras, lo que significa esa fecha en este lugar que fue de detención clandestina, por la que no están y por la que pudimos sobrevivir. Hoy damos testimonio a la memoria travesti. Soy una de las sobrevivientes reparadas en la dictadura militar. Hoy nos encontramos acá en la ex comisaría cuarta, de acá de Santa Fe Capital, donde estuvieron presos políticos, donde fueron torturados, detenidos y algunos eh, desaparecidos. En este lugar eh, éramos detenidas y cumplíamos arresto de hasta 30 a 60 días. Fui perseguida eh, por la policía y soy una sobreviviente de este caos que fue la la persecución policial. Soy una de las sobrevivientes que fue detenida en, en estos calabozos donde cumplíamos arrestos durante 15, 30 días en unos calabozos donde te mantenían prácticamente de rodillas. En época de democracia seguí siendo perseguida. Y recordando también a compañeras que han estado detenidas acá este, durante esa época. Época nefasta, época de desapariciones, de detenciones, de torturas, de, de violencia física y psicológica. Quiero reivindicar nuestras cuerpas y que seamos reconocidas y seguir, dejar de ser perseguidas. Es importante el testimonio de nuestras vidas y nuestras existencias. Con una historia latente de la comunidad trans, de la persecución sistemática que vivimos en la ciudad de Santa Fe. Reivindicar nuestros derechos y traer a la memoria lo que hemos pasado algunas y somos sobrevivientes y podemos contarlos en primera persona. Eso al cielo para todas nuestras compañeras que ya no están y que las seguimos llevando en el corazón. 
Um, I'm just going to ask you for one second. I'm going to stop sharing. I don't know why there were two yellow lines on the screen. So I'm just going to start sharing again so we can get rid of those lines. Apologies for that. We continue now to the next video. Para contar nuestras historias, historias que no fueron ocultas. To share our stories, stories that were prohibited and never heard of. We need to have memory. We need memory in order to prevent this from happening again, to raise awareness about the horror that we endured. We always think that if uh, our memories are part of a collective, then where's our memories? Years being kicked out of bars, being hit, being pulled out of places from our hairs and spending 120 days and then 30 again. So we had like half a day of freedom. Most of us, we don't forget, but our, heels have, our hearts have healed. We were even fed uh, stewed worms, green bread out of hunger. We are survivors. That's why we want this story to have uh, or to remember its history. Most of us spent our times, our lives in prison, all our youth. But now we have the strength to build a memory where new generations can use this element in defense of human rights that we have been denied beyond what uh, we have suffered during the dictatorship. We have also suffered post-dictatorship. This needs to be recorded. It needs to be registered in memory. We need to think about a collective memory where travas and trans people, transvestites and trans are included. We needed to be present in all cultural spaces. We needed to be fully political. We need to move forward and continue fighting because our struggles continue. We're still being humiliated and mistreated and being killed. And that needs to stop. We need to be strong in order to move forward with our lives. I'm so happy to see all my friends, all those who are still alive, and I suffer for those who are no longer with us. And tell them that you can rest in peace because we'll continue fighting and we want everything to change, to be different from what we endured as young. I'm sorry, it's... Uh... Para contar nuestras historias, historias que fueron ocultas, historias que fueron prohibidas, historias que nunca fueron escuchadas. Tiene que haber memoria, tiene que haber memoria para que no vuelva a ocurrir, para visibilizar. memory. Porque siempre pensamos desde, desde el archivo, si las memorias de todos es colectiva, ¿dónde están las memorias de las travestis y trans? Años enteros sacándonos de restaurantes, sacándonos being pulled out of restaurants and bars, being pulled out of, out of places from our hair, and being 120 days out and then 30 days in and again. So we had just half a day of freedom. And we still have, we hold no grudges. Thankfully, we don't forget, but our hearts have healed. We still remember what uh, we endured. We were fed uh, wormy stews and we ate also moldy bread. We're survivors. We want this story to this city to hold that story of the damage we endured in our youth. Most of us spent our youth in prison. But today we have the strength to be able to build a memory where new generations can use this element in defense of human rights 
In addition to what our partners endured during the dictatorship, we have also suffered it after the dictatorship. And this needs to be registered in the memory. We need to think about a collective memory where trans and transvestites are included. It needs to be transverse, cross-sectional. It needs to be present in all cultural spaces. It needs to be political. We have to continue with our struggles because unfortunately we're still being humiliated, mistreated and killed. And that needs to stop. We need to be strong in order to move forward with our lives. I'm happy to see our friends who are still alive and I suffer for those who are gone. And I tell them you can rest in peace because we will continue with our struggle and we want things to be totally different to than when we were young. Um, I apologize, there's a third video that I will show after we finish the sequence of videos uh, today. Okay, so um, this video, this project is also very strong and I am so um, touched by the courage of, of these ladies and uh, the strength with which they, and honesty with which they do their work. It's so important and so unique. And I really hope they succeed. And Gustavo Meonio can tell you more after we, when we get to our Q&A, but I believe there's going to be a theater play today on Human Rights Day, where they will also be showing these videos in Argentina to a larger community. So very encouraging. So the next project that we have, Women of the Blast, uh, from the Social Economic Justice Initiative in Lebanon, touches on an issue um, linked to the Beirut blasts of last year. So as a result of the deep rooted, rooted social norms in Lebanon, a lot of women are marginalized and viewed as lesser beings, not worthy of an education, a job or a position of power. The Beirut blast highlighted the discriminatory gender roles that women have been facing their whole lives, only to have a tragic incident amplify these roles in the worst way possible. Seji's project aims to address women's need for social accountability through a series of videos collecting testimonials and interviews. I would also like to ask Camila to share a text in English and in Arabic in the chat box uh, that speaks of the content of the videos and the interviews, uh, the stories of the interviewees. I have nothing left yet. I am housewife, but this is my own husband was the breadwinner. I he was everything to us. And he's the husband of the moon is the latest victim of the root exclusion or blast. And the host of the surgeon told him that he's not going to live. We were giving him bitch while the test of perfect and the neurologist told him that he is not going uh, to live long. And his psychology and mental was very uh, uh, fatigued. He remained uh, unable to move. Uh, after that, he passed away and he was the only breadwinner. I have, I am under a lot of pressure. But since I passed, my husband is not here anymore and we have we miss him and we feel that we always ask about him. And they ask him, where is that? And I tell them that he's in heaven now. He sees them and he feels you. And they tell me, take us to uh, our bed. So I took him to his uh, grave. And my girl, he tells me that I want to hug my father. And uh, to hug the grave in order to feel your father. Not the same for the population who have been damaged are for women due to their blast. 20,000 women have become mental cold after they were not in blood. Uh, the, the, the biggest price has been paid by women in the world. They most of them become without a profession to take care of them, uh, including some foreign house workers. Support has that this figure of the 100th, the 4th of August, 
both uh, become alongside the economic disability and, uh, and uh, the COVID-19 break and many uh, requests and focus comes to us to our uh, center all the time so that we have got. Uh, but no one uh, feels the other but us. Well, I feel a bit um, I have the responsibility of five star children, and I'm not working. After a short chapter was last, many women uh, started seeking more roles to play uh, because they had lost their partners or their breadwinner. I felt that they were familiar to work out, go to the labor market. Now they started to do that. Now the social norms uh, in her uh, did from doing so. I am a graduate of the uh, Institute for Technology. I then caused my wedding and I asked my husband said I don't want you to continue uh, because you don't have to work, but we would not expect that he will leave uh, out of company and leave you with such a big responsibility. Uh, we have never anticipated those that we are going. The foreign uh, neighbors, also in the foreign house uh, workers, uh, we, uh, we always uh, think about our country, but uh, we are under harsh situation. But no one is thinking about uh, dying out of sudden. Uh, those uh, foreign house workers, they uh, seek uh, employment in other countries due to their, their situation back home. So this is one of the Cuban workers. She got married while she was 15 years old. She was a company, she did not expect uh, to live her life uh, prior to uh, her birth of something. I do think and she never saw that her daughter will look at as she will die in Lebanon. I have a picture of her with my son. I could not look at her. I only know her from her and I put her hair here. Because her face was born very beautiful blood. I only recognize her. She was not Aware, and I told her to just wake up. Can you hear me, ma'am? Many said that to have each government to be uh, in the economic situation. And the remaining still phase of any as the business. I'm still I always uh, tell myself uh, they always my family they tell me to get back and I always tell them that there is death everywhere. I cannot explain anything now. I have nothing much. Uh, the pain is huge and no one is understanding it. No one is. Both are such a powerful video. Um, Asama, I have congratulated you, but it's. Very, very beautiful and touching. The next two projects, they are not video-based. So uh, Oadede from Guinea developed a project that's based on radio uh, broadcasts and the radio broadcasts were quite long. They were about an hour long, so we wouldn't be able to share it here. So I'm going to invite our two next members, Oadede and Smak from Kenya to talk about their projects. Uh, I will just read a quick summary of the projects. Um, so, Oadede, um, the project is about restrictions implemented 
during the fight against the pandemic that do not, did not include a gender perspective. In Conakry, pregnant women have had their mobility reduced the night, uh, during the night while being exposed to police scams and having their access to health services restricted. Or that this campaign composed uh, by radio broadcasts and a TV show raise, uh, raises the awareness of authorities, police officers and general public on this topic. Uh, and after over the day, we are going to speak to Angeline, uh, Angeline uh, from Single Mothers Association of Kenya. Um, there are lots of factors influencing poverty and gender-based violence towards women in Kenya, such as low levels of literacy, early childbearing, and high number of uh, numbers of children or dependents, limited access to credit for business or poor housing, inadequate access to health services, poor sanitation facilities, abuse of rights and insecurity for women. The campaign developed by Single Mothers Association of Kenya raises awareness of women's rights to housing as a basic human, human rights and fights against violence against women. And it was a campaign carried out during the 16 days of activism against violence against women and children. So I'm going to now stop sharing my screen and uh, I encourage you to use uh, speaker view. I would like to call Jean-Zézé Guy Lavogui uh, from uh, OADD Guinea to uh, tell us in six or seven minutes about his project. Jean-Zézé, the floor is yours. Okay, uh, bonsoir tous. Un réel plaisir pour moi. Good afternoon, everyone. It is a pleasure for me to be here again this afternoon to speak about our activities that we undertook in Conakry. Here we have to remind that our project is part of uh, uh, calling, making a call on the authorities owing to the past that we have had in Conakry, especially as regards the restrictions of fundamental uh, freedom owing to the pandemic of coronavirus we have since the 12th of March 2020. These restrictions, as it was said, did not include expressly gender dimension. We know that it is a fundamental issue, an issue of public health authorities had to take measures to uproot the propagation of the pandemic in the country. However, we have to remind that these measures, even if they have uh, uh, to be taken, they have to include expressly the gender dimension. We've uh, seen cases of victims, uh, violations of these restrictions, uh, victims who were able, were not able to uh, lead their life. If you uh, you see our campaign of advocacy we had at the radio, the national radio on the 27th, you will see that everywhere the victim, Madame Aisatu Kulibali, she was a teacher by profession. She was courageous enough to express herself because when she faced discrimination, social discrimination uh, from her environment, but beyond that, she faced also total abandonment by the authority because the code of procedures or civil procedures uh, say that it is the obligation of the state to bring assistance to the victims of the violation of human rights. You are not going, if a person is a victim of COVID, COVID, you are not going to restrict the whole family which did not even have access to go out, even to go and get food. Not even the authorities could supply food. That is the danger that was facing this family. During one month and three weeks, these people were suffering. If the, had it, hadn't it been the help of some people who were helping people suffering, I don't think that the Kulibali family was going to leave. So it is pathetic to see such realities in a country which calls itself a country of human rights. So we undertook these activities 
and we came to understand that Madame Liba Li beyond everything that she faced, she became much more strong, stronger because by speaking openly at the radio, at the TV, what she faced, this allowed her to relieve herself to get over the uh, trauma that she faced. And what touched us is the fact that she was able to speak, to speak against the new authorities, to pay attention because we have variants that are coming like Omicron and what is coming uh, through Europe, which means that coronavirus has not come to an end. So uh, just in case, we don't wish that it will come back to our, our country, but just to, pay attention for prevention. We should avoid to leave such in this country. The woman is fragile, she needs attention, she needs protection. So we had success in the implementation of these activities because the biggest element was to involve a victim. And one of the advocacy messages from Madame Koulibaly, a teacher by profession, uh, to us and to the partners, to the state as well is to, to allow the, the, the victims to express to them, to allow them to make a group of victims so that they could be able to claim the rights which have been deprived, which they were being deprived in our country. So this was called to us they wanted us to help them, to help them to uh, to group themselves because she gave us a lot of cases. We received, we received that, but there are so many other cases that are undercover and nobody knows about it. So, but on the other end, we because the Minister of Social Action uh, Protection of Childhood through the person responsible of the UNICEF in Guinea was in charge of the protection of the child has promised to uh, speak during our uh, programs to, to speak about the concern of CMRB, which is a priority. The promotion of human rights, but especially the promotion of the rights of women, particularly, which is a priority in his policies and uh, strategy for the planning of policies. Unfortunately, these days she was so busy, she could not speak, but she received the copies of these programs officially so that she uh, could see the work that we've been able to do to allow them to do it at the national level and bring people to understand the situation of the women and fragility and also by taking measures uh, so that the gender dimension should not be excluded because these persons who are vulnerable are not only uh, women we have young people we have people living with disability we have elderly persons you have to take into account some parameters if we want to take some measures otherwise you are going to uh, to offend the fundamental rights the rights of people to go and uh, see their doctors. So, because we received messages uh, of encouragement, we received telephone calls to encourage us with regard to the reality we spoke about. Regarding this issue of women to make of it a priority and also a fundamental issue in our society. So we have spoken about the prejudice, the prejudice against uh, women. They say women are weak, are people who cannot be able to claim for their rights. But I've come to understand through this project that. Uh, women are able to defend themselves if you give them uh, the time to do so and they are well listened than uh, men because this was our concern when Madame Koulibaly accepted to express herself uh, for about 20 minutes on a situation and 
uh, about a family and what if she faced from the authorities regarding these restrictions of fundamental free them when the measures were taken to uphold the propagation of COVID-19. We say thank you to the coalition which has been supporting us for us to be able to implement this project. This is the beginning because we still have to do and we'll have uh, things to do. Uh, this is in short the activities as you can see and with regard to the schedule there was a small gap with regard to the program we had regarding renaissance uh, so uh, the through as well you can go and visit to see all the work we have done on site in our country thank you so much Thank you, Jean Zazé. Uh, we, as we did with the other, uh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to, uh, we, as we did with the other global actions, there will be also a web page and we will be sharing your campaigns today. I will share uh, uh, social media links with you just before we, we finish today. Uh, but all the work that you have done will be also linked to a web page that we are organizing and it will be made. Uh, Voilà, je voulais, je voulais placer quelque chose. Uh, to, uh, we, we need to, we need to move. We need to give uh, time now to Smack. Unfortunately, okay. we don't have time. In fact, in fact, it was just, uh, it, it, it was just one, one minute, one minute or 30, 30 seconds. Okay, go ahead. Just. Bon, euh, il faut rappeler que il y a la femme qu'on a rendu hommage mm. dans l'une des missions. We have. To remind about the woman we speak in one of our programs who was raped and uh, hacked before she was killed. The name was Masila. We were really traumatized, and we uh, even even the doctors who were on a case uh, operated upon. Her. Unfortunately, she could not survive. She died from her wounds. We had to mention this. It is to say that. We have violations of human rights, which are spiking in our country. Thank you. Thank you. Very important uh, message there. Thank you, Jean Zazet. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to call Angelina, uh, uh, please, from SMAC, to tell us in five, six minutes about the, ac the activities you have carried out in Kenya. Angelina, I see where you are with us. Can you, are you able to join? I, uh, is your connection okay? Angelina? Okay, I will share my screen again. I would like to play the the last video uh, from Museo Internacional para la Democracia. Um, here it is. Hmm. Doesn't seem to want to be played. Apologies, I don't seem to be having any luck with this last video. Gustavo, perdón. Elena, if you can try from your side, please. Elena? Okay. I will try again. <laughs> I am just uh, going. JJ, maybe I can yes. do it. 
Yes, uh, but you need to find the, the route to it. I have the I have the video. Okay, please. So Some let me second. add it. Thank you, Camila. Is this all right? Yes, this is correct. Contar nuestras historias. Historias que fueron ocultas, historias que fueron prohibidas, historias que nunca fueron escuchadas. Claro, el humor fue una herramienta de sobrevivencia totalmente. O sea, tenemos un humor ácido, un humor de mierda, sarcástico, un humor negro. Pero el humor nos salvó, nos salvó, chicas. De todos nos reíamos. Corríamos como locas de la policía y cuando ya la policía se había ido, que logramos escapar, nos matamos de la risa. Una anécdota que en el año 87 por primera vez vino el Papa, Juan Pablo II, acá en la ciudad de Rosario, y nos hicieron una emboscada la policía tres meses antes, nos decían que teníamos, nos dejaban libres y seguíamos trabajando. Nosotras generalmente trabajábamos por la calle Montevideo, Montevideo de la Prida, Montevideo, era la, nuestra zona roja, Montevideo y Juan Manuel de Rosa, y la policía eh, vino una noche y nos dijo que nos iba a dejar tranquilas y nos acercábamos más para el parque Urquiza. Entonces nosotras íbamos acercándonos cada vez más, cada vez más hasta el parque Urquiza. Cuando llegamos al parque Urquiza, la policía nos hizo una emboscada a todas juntas. Caímos casi todas, menos yo y una compañera que nos subimos arriba de un árbol en el parque Urquiza, tipo mono. Te desesperada porque en este momento de la desesperación haces cualquier cosa y te tiras de un quinto piso para el zafar. Hemos corrido de arriba de los techos con mi amiga Marcia y Dali. Lo hemos metido a casas de familia que estaban cenando y nosotros los metíamos dentro de, los, de las casas sentando los tapiales. Yo pensé que estaba sola porque yo de la desesperación me subí sola arriba de un árbol. Y se vino la policía, se las llevó a todas y después quedó un silencio total y por ahí siento... And everything was in total silence. And then he heard. Pensaba que era la policía y yo estaba muda. I thought it was the Carol, police. Carol, yo digo, ¿qué, the, ¿quién Carol, es? Soy yo, Susana. Carol, estaba otra that? arriba It's del árbol. Well, she was tipo mono, las dos ahí trepadas, ¿me entendés? Like Estamos like tan aterrados que estuvimos como dos horas ahí arriba del árbol so esperando que todo pase. Scared. That con we, la mala suerte que bajé y me agarraron a, a los 20 minutos yo tenía hepatitis que me quedó amarilla de la hepatitis que tenía me llevaron prisa con hepatitis 2 nosotras casi todas las rosas eran más muy coquetas para vestir y usábamos eh, carteras de cuero siempre fue así hasta que la, la empresa empezó a sacarnos los bolsos Sí, y era un presupuesto, era un presupuesto porque hasta que después que inventamos la moda de bolsitas de propaganda de zapatería, nos pegamos las esquinas con las bolsitas de zapatería porque era un presupuesto. Caí con la jueza, caí con la jueza y la jueza era tan espléndida, que usaba tacos, taller y todo. Y le digo, ay, le digo, doctor, usted no se lo quería, se me regalaría algunos trapitos. Dice, ¿cómo le voy a regalar al Nájer? Dice que yo la estoy contratando por estar vestida de mujer. Le digo, ay, qué mala onda. Había un chico que se iba a hacerse novio y andaba a caballo. Y bueno, y todas empezaban a correr, a subir el barranco. Y yo tenía unos tacos así que digo... I was wearing this high heels. Me dice, pero qué quieres que haga? Me digo, dale, me agarró, me agarró. What do you want me to do? Pues yo me levantó y subí. Me decía que yo de los nervios era que le pegaba la panza al caballo, pero tenía miedo de caballo. I was so nervous I was kicking the horse. Me agarré por todo el empedrado de 27 de febrero así. Pero la gente que pasaba, el caballo de febrero que pasaba yo caballo. And I was hopping on the horse. Llego y digo, ay, pienso que no me deben seguir. Me había seguido como cuatro o cinco cuadras corrido. I was being followed like for four or five blocks. And once they cut up to me, and they just tapped on my, on my shoulder, say, "Hey, you know, you're arrested." It was so delicate. Gracias, Cami. Gracias. Thank you, Cami. I will share the um, our presentation again, just to uh, share with all of you the social media handles that we will be using. So today, Human Rights Day, we will be sharing all the campaigns generated by our members using these hashtags. 
Uh, and please follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. We'll, we're going to be using these hashtags and, and sharing all the materials that have been created. And so you can also repost and uh, see it, see them again. If